there well, any uh, others? So, for example, mm -hmm. we have stuff like the petal mm. pollen. Okay. Mitochondria, <laughs> plant DNA. Okay. So throwing out a big word there, such as mitochondria, I'm happy to say that that's not necessarily what we'll be focusing on today. That's more the organelles inside plant cells. We're looking at the plant as an overall today. So, stem. Okay, nice. I was expecting that to come up a bit more. So, thank you, Matilda, for that one. So, let's go through today's objectives. So, today, we need to know key structures in the plant reproductive system. We need to understand how plant reproduction occurs. And then we need to be able to name different methods of seed dispersal, explaining their benefits in plant reproduction. Um, again, can I just please make sure that if you are joining that your mic is muted, it can be quite distracting. Okay, so let's get straight into it. This shouldn't take too long today. But again, if there's any questions, feel free to ask them and I'll try and get to them as we're going along. But uh, yeah, so first things first, we can actually separate plant reproductive systems into male and female. And uh, it's quite important that we know the function of each structure. Now, the female organ is known as the pistil, but you may also see it named the carpal. And I believe it was named carpal in the image I've shown on do now, but in this circumstance, it's the pistil. More often than not, you're going to see the pistil. So, three parts. We have the stigma. Now, this is like a sticky sort of surface, usually found in the center, and that will be um, used to help catch pollen. Now, if you know what pollen is and you're like me and you suffer with hay fever, you'll know that it's currently pollen season and we'll get into that soon. We have the style. This will hold up the stigma to support it. OK, it's very important that this has a very sturdy structure. So is it low pollen? OK, well, for me, sadly, it isn't at the moment. Uh, well, we have the style which will hold up the stigma. Now, it's very, very important that this stays upright because if this uh, does not get enough pollen then that will not lead into efficient reproduction. We have the ovary, you may have heard that when describing reproductive systems in humans. Hi Ellie. And this will contain the ovule which is the female sex cell. Okay so again there's a very important word that you can use and it just takes your wording and your answers up to a bit of a higher level and that is called gametes. So this should be changed to male, my apologies. This is the male organ, and that is known as the stamen. Okay? Now, the male part is a lot more simplistic in terms of that it has one less structure that we need to worry about. So we're just going to mute someone. There we go. Now, there are two parts of the male plant reproductive system. Ryan's saying he can't hear. Can everybody else hear me? Maybe I'll move the mic. Yep. Hi, oh, lovely. Plenty of responses. That's always nice. All right, great stuff. Don't worry about being late, Georgia. That's perfectly fine. Now, the male reproductive organ, known as the stamen, is made up of two structures. The antha. Now, the antha produces the pollen, which is the male sex cell. So very similar in like male and female human reproduction is uh, you have your, your sperm and egg. Plants also have gametes. OK, they're sex cells. So let's just quickly recap. The pollen is the male sex cell, which is produced by the anther. And if we go back one slide, if it would like to do that for me, there we go. Um, the ovules, which is the female sex cell. Now, also in the male is the filament. And this will hold up the anther to support it. So again, very, very important that things are upright, they're structured and they've got a very good. Well, that's, that's basically it. The nectar, we're not worrying too much about that for now because that's not necessarily involved in plant reproduction. So our first check phase for the first lesson objective, we've gone through it. What I'd like you to do is match up. Hmm. That's actually a bit of a pain. What I'd like you to do is match up. Well, you're going to it was originally meant to be uh, letters on one side and numbers on one side. What we're just going to have to do is match up. Uh, blue A to green A instead. OK, so in the chat, I'll place an example in there. So if you believe that antha contains ovules, you would say blue A, green E. OK, so I've just put that in the chat 
and try and give it a go. Maybe do all five into one answer and we'll see how this goes. I'll give you about two minutes to do this. So again, guys, blue A to green E may or may not be the correct answer. That was just me giving an example of how to answer it. No worries, Lee. So, Antha, what does that match up to? Try and do all five answers in one, guys, so in one message. So if you believe blue A goes to green E, then you'll put that and then follow it with whatever else, okay? Blue C goes to green E, is what Dylan is saying. Don't worry about joining late, Miriam. As long as you're here, that's the most important thing. Again, guys, if you do feel like you've missed anything, this will be uploaded to the SRS Science YouTube channel. Keep those answers coming in the chat, guys. I love participation and everything is going really, really well. Yeah, of course, you can do it in your journal, Ellie. However you feel comfortable. Hello, Katie. I can see that. Blue C, green E. Okay. Fifteen more seconds and we'll go through the answers. Let's see how we're doing. Don't worry about that, Ray. I remember what I said. This will be uploaded to the SRS Science YouTube channel. You can catch up on anything that you've missed. Okay, so we've got blue A to green D. That's fine, Ellie. I'll give you a bit more time then. This is brilliant, guys. Participation is absolutely wonderful. Keep it up. Okay, let's go through some answers. So, blue A will match up da, 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 to green D. It produces the pollen, which is the male sex cell. Blue B, the stigma. That is the sticky surface which will help catch the pollen. So blue B to green B. Ellie, don't worry about it. As long as you're paying attention, that's all we can ask for. Now, blue C, the ovary, that will match to green E. So blue C to green E, the ovary, will contain the ovules. And if I remember, Katie, you got that correct, as far as I'm aware. And the ovules are the female sex cells. Now we have the filament. So blue D. Uh, apparently I've done my animations in the wrong order, so we're actually just skipping straight to the style. So style, which is blue E, will support the stigma. Now we're going back to the filament, which actually is blue D to green A, so that will support the anther. So let's just recap that one more time. The anther will produce pollen, the male sex cell. The stigma is a sticky surface to help catch the pollen. The ovary contains the ovules, which is the female sex cells. The filament support the anther, and the style support the stigma. Okay. Um, should we copy this into our science books? Um, that is up to you if you want to take notes. But what I will say is maybe just try and keep up. If you feel like there's anything missing, again, there is the, uh, the science YouTube channel, SRS Science, where this will be uploaded. So if you feel like you've missed anything. Cool. Right. Now, we're moving on to our second objective. So that is to understand how plant reproduction works. Okay. Now the aim of reproduction in plants is to produce seeds. You've probably seen seeds maybe about on the floor. Maybe you've even kicked well, the, uh, plants and the seeds have gone everywhere. And you may have seen them in fruits. So 
This process will begin with something called pollination. You may have heard of this term before. Now, this is when pollen is produced by the anther will be transferred to the stigma. So we want pollen produced by the anther to land on the stigma, which remember is our sticky surface. OK, now, interestingly about plants, they can do this by two different methods. Now, this can happen between two different plants, which is known as cross pollination, or they can actually fertilize themselves, which is self pollination. Okay. Now, that is because they do possess both male and female reproductive systems. It is important to know. Oh, Luke, I feel like you're having some connection issues. You just had a load of messages come through. Um, so this is slightly, um, how should we say, disadvantageous because what we want is genetic variation and self-pollination doesn't allow for that. Um, we have someone asking how. Now, this is because um, all plants, so I'm just going to mute someone. As, oh. Cool. So this is just because they possess both male and female reproductive organs. OK. Right. <clears throat> Moving on. Fertilization. <clears throat> my apologies for clearing my throat. Now, this will occur in the following steps. Now, just before moving on to that, I can see someone just put a very good comment. The seed sometimes gets moved by passing animals so that the plants can grow in other places. Now, I want you to hold on to that thought because that's a very, very good one that we're going to go into quite a bit of detail later on. Great. So let's start off with our steps. Step one. Pollination occurs. That's what we've just gone over. Now, this can happen by wind, insect or self pollination. There's some others as well. And we'll go into that again in a bit more detail later. And when we talk about self pollination, how this will happen, the pollen will fall off the petal straight onto the uh, stigma. And yeah, it pretty much just self pollinates itself. Now, you can probably see here that there's a nice little animation. This is for you to try and visualize what we're going through when we do each step. Step two, the pollen will begin to grow a pollen tube down the style. Step three, once the pollen tube reaches the ovary, the pollen will release its nucleus down the tube. Now, if you remember about human reproduction, we talk about fusion of nuclei of the sperm and egg cell. For any form of fertilization, there needs to be fusion of the nuclei, even in plants. OK, so remember what we said, the pollen is the male sex cell for the plant and that will have a nucleus and the ovary is or the ovule is the female um, sex cell. So once the pollen has re uh, released its nucleus, the process um, of fertilization will occur within the ovule. So the ovary, now a lot of people don't realize this, the ovary will grow into the fruit and the ovary will grow into the seeds. OK, so when you're eating a piece of fruit, you're eating a plant ovary and the seeds are the ovules. I know that sounds gross, but they're delicious. So let's just run through our steps. So step one, the pollen will land on the stigma. Now the tube will grow down the style and enters the ovary. Now the nucleus of the pollen will uh, fuse with the nucleus of the ovule. Now, I do realize that it says fertilizers with a Z there. This is the Americanized spelling. We spell it with an S like here. And then after that, fertilization will occur. Any questions regarding this at all? Because it's a lot of information that we've gone through. Can I unmute your mic, please? Um, why would we need to do that, Ellie? Oh, oh can you? OK, my primary teacher once said that plants are that because it is a woman and a male. So they do possess both me, male and female reproductive um, organs. But I probably wouldn't use that term to describe them. To say answers. Um, Ellie, feel free to just type them in, because if we just start talking, more other people might do that. It can get very confusing for others. OK. Now. What if the bees eat the seeds? What happens to them? Again, very, very good question um, that we will be answering in a bit more detail. So hold on to that because that does link into our third objective. So Ryan, let's, uh, let's not mention anything more of that as it's not necessarily relevant to the lesson, okay? 
what will happen if the style falls to move pollen to or fails to move pollen to the ovary? Um, fertilization won't occur and then seeds won't be produced. Because remember what we said, the whole point is to produce seeds. Once a seed has been created or formed, should I say, um, there's three very, very important structures that are in the seed. The first one is the seed coat. Now this will protect the seed. The second is the embryo. Now, you've, again, you've probably heard embryo when discussing the human reproductive system. But in this circumstance, it's a little bit different as this is the root and shoots that will grow into the developing plant. There's also a food store. Can anybody name the process and chemical reaction in which plants produce their own food? Let's see. Okay, Harry, Brianna, nice. Good, yeah, nice. It's photosynthesis. Now, we can get away with saying photosynthesis in the year that we're at, but it is better to say it produces sugars, such as, actually, no, I'll leave that question to you. Does anybody know what sugar is produced by photosynthesis? Well done, rain, straight in there. Good job. Um, it is glucose. Now, when you can store glucose as a form of starch or as a, a more complex sugar known as starch. Now, Obviously, seeds will be buried in the ground, so they won't have access to sunlight just yet, not until this root and shoot can grow. So they will have a food store of glucose um, or starch, essentially, which can be broken down. And that will just help it survive in its early days until the plant can photosynthesize. Now, after this, once it begins to grow, because science loves to take things to another level, photosynthesis, is that right? Yep, Ellie, 100%. Why is it called photosynthesis if there is no photo taken? Um, when we break down certain words, okay, um, they have a meaning from Latin. So the word photo represents light. So if you think about a photograph, if you take a photograph, there is a flash. If you take a photograph in complete darkness, you won't get a picture. And synthesize, synthesis is a word that means to create. So photosynthesis means to create with the use of light. Okay. Now, a lot of people believe that plants won't photosynthesize at night. They do just at a much, much lower rate. Uh, rate sorry. So once a seed begins to grow, again, science loves to take it over the top. And we use a fancy word called germination. If anybody's done a bit of gardening, you may have heard of this word before. Now, to do this, the seed will need three main resources. You can add others, but just for now, we'll say that these are essential. So the first one is water. Now the water will help the seed to swell to begin growth. We need this to start growing and pushing out of the seed coat. Oxygen. Now this is used for respiration, a chemical reaction required to release energy. Has anybody ever heard of respiration before? And can anybody tell me where respiration takes place? Ah, I'm glad we heard of it. Can anybody tell me where it takes place? Okay, so we've got in your muscles. Okay, not a bad start. Not a bad start. Let's see if we can get anybody to take it any further. There was a word beginning with M that someone said right at the start of the lesson. There we go. Nice. Good stuff. Mitochondria. Now, it's very, very nice to know that. Because um, the nice thing about biology is that a lot of things link in. Now, the third thing that we're going to say is essential. Well done, Alex. Well done, Miriam. Well done, Edward. Aidan, Rafiq, nice. Good job. Now, the third thing that we'll say is essential is warmth. Now, just like our bodies have to stay at a certain temperature, plants also need to do that, and in particular the seed, because what warmth does, it helps to maintain optimal rates of reaction in the plant. Now, again, this links into respiration, because respiration is a chemical reaction, it's happening non-stop. Now, when you have an optimal temperature, does anybody know what this word optimal means? Feel free to put it in the chat, because again, we're using some key terms, and it's very important that we know what that means. Yep, looks great, Ellie. Certain, optional, average, greatest. Okay, 
plants need a specific temperature or they die from the heat. Okay, Julia, we can take that a little bit further when we talk about this. Okay, so that word optimal, surely you can copy it. That word optimal means working to the best of its ability or the most efficient. So if you wanted to go do some running or if you wanted to run a race, it'd probably be best or optimal to run on a racetrack rather than a very muddy park that's just rained the night before. It's going to be a lot more efficient for you to run on there. So the warmth is going to uh, keep optimal rates of respiration. So it releases energy and that will help it grow quicker. Make sense? Feel free to post any questions now. plants didn't exist would humans exist sure ellie you can screenshot everything that you need um so i said that's probably more to do with food chains i believe you've done a lesson on food chains with mr williams um but remember plants will be producers so this is very very essential for all life okay because they produce their oxygen which of course we use great going to move on so You'll notice that we are moving at quite a bit of a fast pace, and that's because a lot of the things tie in, and I promise you now you're going to be seeing them a lot um, all coming together. So what I'd like you to do, the first one is I have a series of letters here. You can put them all into one answer. All you need to do is put in the keywords um, for each, and the second one, you can separate that into A and B. So 2A, describe what pollination is, and 2B, describe the differences between cross-pollination and self-pollination. I'm going to give you about four to five minutes to do this. And uh, yeah, if you do need any help, Ellie, how long do we have left? So the lesson would finish at about half one. Okay, so you have about five minutes. However, if we finish early, then we finish early. So don't worry too much. So you have five minutes. First part, you need to fill in the keywords. So if you was to answer something, I'm not going to say whether this is right or wrong. I will say A, and then maybe, um, let's say, pollen. Okay, so that's how I would answer it. But you're going to put all of them into one answer, okay? So, four to five minutes, let's go. Yeah, Miriam, um, I'll be taking your lessons from uh, now on. I'm Mr. Witsy. You may have seen me, may have heard of me. But let's go with our answers. So, four to five minutes. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me and I'll try and help you. No worries, Harry. So I'll just make it very clear what we need to do now. So we've just gone through a certain things. Um, now I have a series of letters here. You just need to put the letters and the keywords. Then you can answer 2A and 2B. Don't worry, Ikram, the more people that answer, it will keep pushing it up. And I will scroll through and I'll check everyone's answers again. Don't worry about that. Guys, anybody worrying about notifications, don't worry about it just for now. Um, I will deny that very quickly. Sorry, uh, anybody that is requesting for notifications, um, unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do to stop that. But what I will say is feel free to put your answer in the chat. I will scroll through. OK, so we have a couple of percent. They don't get it. So I have a paragraph of text here about the things that we have just learned. What you need to do is put in the chat what each keyword will be. So, for example, I'm not saying whether this is right or wrong. You'd put A and then I'm going to say that it's pollen. OK, maybe, may not. That's for you to think about. If you're not sure, just give it a guess. There is absolutely nothing wrong with getting a wrong answer. Just try your best and then we'll work for it together, okay? No worries, Nyla.
Keep going, guys and girls. You have about a minute and a half left. Yeah, Kate, okay, you're filling the gaps. Keywords. Okay, 45 more seconds. So Harry, you would need to fill in the gaps with the key words. So what do you think would go into A? What do you think would go to B, C, and so on? And then you've got questions 2A and 2B. Exactly like Miriam has done just now. Am I going to say whether it's right or wrong? I sure, of course you can. Uh, Miriam, have you done question two? So two A and two B. Ellie, we'll go over it in a second. We'll see if it's right. Don't worry, Brianna, I saw your answer before. And uh, the reason why I didn't read it out is just in case I don't want people to uh, maybe get some ideas. And Miriam, don't worry, I'll be able to tell if people have copy and pasted. I'm all good, Ellie. Thanks for asking. Hope you're doing well too. Right, let's go through. So, A, during something... What do we think this something is? Let's go through some answers. So I see photosynthesis. I see pollination. I see fertilization. Stigma. Okay. So, A, it would be during fertilization. Okay. The nucleus of. Okay. B would be the pollen grain. And the nucleus of the what? We'll join. Let's have a look. I see Ellie putting C is female. Let's have a look at some other answers. Ovule. Well done, Edward. That would be the ovule. Oh, my bad. Okay, the ovary then develops into what? What did I say the ovary will develop into? <laughs> Don't worry about getting it wrong, Ellie. It's perfectly fine. Not quite. The ovary develops into the fruit. And the ovules become the seed. Okay. So. We then move on to F, which is germinate. And the seed needs warmth, water and oxygen. So let's just read through this again one more time. So during fertilization, the nucleus of the pollen grain and the nucleus of the ovary join together. I'm not a big fan of this word join. Um, I much prefer fuse. It's a lot more scientifically accurate. So maybe try and get into the habit of using fuse instead of word join. Um, the ovary then develops into the fruit and the ovules become seeds. To germinate, the seed needs warmth, water and oxygen. Now I can see a lot of people doing 2A. So I'm going to go back to Brianna's answer and let's see how she's done. So 2A, pollination is when pollen grains move from one flower to the stigma of another flower. Okay, well done. Pollination is the transfer of pollen to the stigma. Now, that does lead on to cross-pollination and uh, self-pollination. So cross-pollination occurs between two different plants, whereas self-pollination occurs between the same plants. Yes, Ellie, this will be recorded. It will go up onto the SRS Science YouTube channel. Okay, Miraj, if you do need to go, remember what I've just said. Okay, Science YouTube channel that you can catch up on. Now, methods of seed dispersal. What I do remember 
is some people talking about animal dispersal before. So they were talking about bees and other things. Does anybody think they know any other method of seed dispersal before we reveal them? There's four main ones that I'm looking for. So first one, we had animal. Does anybody think they know anything else? Okay, so Harry's, that's a very, very good idea, Harry. Um, now that we'll talk about two other um, sort of little subcategories that we're going to talk about. So do keep that in mind. Very good start. Insect. Okay. Do you think we can extend that a little bit further, Ikram? Insect. What do we mean? Julia, wind. Okay, Ellie, what I'll say now, please don't post any images or gifts in there because we are trying to keep this relevant and they will be removed. Bees. Okay. So they would fall under the animal category. No worries, Ellie. So we have, I've seen animals and wind. Does anybody think they know any others? Explosion. Not bad at all. Okay. So let's reveal the big four. So first one, wind. Okay, you may have seen like your little, um, I call them helicopters, the little ones that sort of float by and they just spin around and round and round. If you look, the seed capsule is at the bottom or we have our lovely ones, which I'm sure we've all kicked over the, um, the field. We have animals. Now there are two little categories that we focus on here. One of them is internal, which means, and I believe someone said that before, I think it was Harry. Um, the animals will eat the seeds and then they will excrete them out as feces. And the second is external. OK, that means that they will usually stick to the fur or just the body of the insect. It will fly or just move to another area and then the seeds will fall off. We have water. If you know your willow trees, they're usually found near uh, places of water. The seeds can fall into the river, fall downstream and just go into fertile soil and just start growing there. And then I see one person get this. So good job. Explosive. They can just explode and spread their seeds from that. They have like little um, biological mechanisms that allow them to do this. Obviously, different species of plants before you ask how they do this. Different species of plants have different mechanisms, so I can't give an exact answer. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> good job, Ali. So. We are coming up to our plenary. So like I said, it may have been a bit of a shorter lesson than usual. Um, but that's because there's a lot of things that we can carry on. If you do want me to go over anything else while we're going over this, we can do at the end. But let's move on to our plenary to see how much we know. So first one is an exam style question. So the diagram shows a section through a flower from a cherry tree. So we have our labels that we've all gone over earlier. Now, what I'd like to know is which part becomes the seed, which part becomes the fruit, and what is the function of the anther? So if you'd like to answer in chat, say I, 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 and then I, I, I. Try and put them in an order which it can tell, uh, which it can help me tell what answer is for what question. So let's just repeat that again. The diagram shows a section for a flower from a cherry tree. Which part becomes the seed? Which part becomes the fruit? And what is the function of the anther? Feel free to put your messages in the chat and we'll read them and then we'll go over them. You'll have about a minute and a half. Okay, so we've got some answers coming in already. Okay, I see a lot of people answering the first one. Do the second and third. You have about 45 seconds left. see somebody confused maybe on the third one look where the anther is placed what could it be catching or what could it be releasing who knows fifteen more seconds then we'll go through the answers
Okay. So, AI. Let's have a look. Was the ovule. II is the ovary. And III, I'm not too sure any. Okay, so I'll just see where people answer there. Um, it contains, stores, um, or releases the pollen. Good job. All right. Question B. There is an echo, so let me. I'm not sure if it's an echo. I believe it's not. We have turned the mic off, so let me quickly just mute them. Find them. Wonderful. Um, question B. The drawing below shows the fruit of two different plants. So we have goose grass. Now, if you can't see here what this is, it has hooks. And this still echoes. Hmm, I shouldn't be doing that. Ellie's saying it's freezing. Can everybody see my mouse moving or is it freezing? Just do a quick yes in the chat. Can you hear my voice or is it freezing? Moving. Yep. If we go back, you should see the animations. Can you see this animation? Yeah. Great. Wonderful. So let's just read through the question again. So the drawing below shows the fruits of two different plants. First, we have the goose grass, which has hooks on it. The second, we have a goat's beard, and it has soft, downy hairs. Now, what I'd like you to do for each fruit, suggest how its structure helps the seeds to be scattered away from the parent plant. So how will these seeds, so is someone saying it's freezing again? How will these seeds um, be scattered away and how will the structure help them? So you may need to say which type of dispersal we spoke about and how is that beneficial to it? Are we clear with what it's asking? Edward straight in with an answer there. Cool, so let's go guys. I'm gonna give you two marks. So we'll say roughly two minutes. Feel free to put your answers in the chat. So again, how does the structure help it to be scattered away from the parent plant? Okay, so Ben, I know that you've joined late. What we're doing is this question here, B. We're looking at two different types of seeds. How do you think they are dispersed? And how does the structure help them to be scattered far away? So I'm gonna give you about 30 more seconds. Okay, Harry, so I can see that is 100% uh, a copied comment that's not necessarily relevant to it, so I will be deleting that. Okay, so we got a nice theory there from Aisha. Maybe it floats like an umbrella. Um, Ellie, I'll say we're really close to ending the lesson, so what I will say is uh, just stick around for now if you can, but if you have to go, that's perfectly fine. So Julia, goose grass, has hooks that attach to an insect or an animal. Second one, it gets scattered by the wind since it can float around. Okay, some really nice answers. Um, some really, really nice answers. So let's go through what they would say. So first things first, our answer needed to refer to the hooks on the goose grass, uh, goose grass even, and the hairs on the goat's beard fruit. So first one, the goose grass has hooks that attach it to the animals, their clothes or fur. So yes, can we ask questions that do? Yeah, sure. Um, so that we can also have seeds on us. You may not see them, maybe very small, but the hooks will attach to them, okay? And for the goat's beard, it has hairs on them, which 
parachute it or carry it in the wind. What is really important to know is that we do have some answers that you can't accept. So like it says, do not accept it is carried by the animals. And that's because of this question here, is, uh, or this word here, sorry, suggest. That means that you need to explain why that is beneficial. So we can say the hooks attached to it, okay? And that's relating to the structure of the seed. Um, same sort of thing here, the hairs help it um, parachute or carry it in the wind. Okay. Last questions, we have C, explain why it is an advantage to plants that their seeds are scattered far apart. And then if you do finish that a bit early, we have the challenge. The pollen grain lands on the female part of the flower. Describe the next stages in the process, which results in seed formation. Obviously, with this being a challenge, it will be a bit higher level. So you do need a bit more detail. That's why it's a four marker. So again, question C, and then the challenge, please. Put your answers in chat. I'm going to give you about three minutes to do this. Harry Straighten with an answer talking about competition from sunlight. I'll not be saying whether they're right or wrong until we go through the answers. I should say, and I think because plants need space to grow properly, so when they're scattered far apart, they have space. Okay, so remember the question, explain why it is an advantage. Why is it better to have more space? Okay, Ellie, if you have to go, you have to go. Thanks for joining. No worries. No need to apologize. The sunlight competition. What do we mean by the sunlight competition? To grow properly to get enough sunlight. Okay. Why would we be Zuckerfer, why would we be getting enough sunlight in that situation? What are we not having to do? Because it's an advantage of creating more plants in the area, so one spot, so there are more of these plants where you two, Ellie, stay safe. God will, don't worry, this, will, this whole video will be uploaded to SRS Science. Okay, great. I've seen a lot of answers for C. Let's see if we can get some answers for the challenge. So again, I'll just read through that. The pollen grains land on the female part of the flower. Describe the next stages in the process, which results in seed formation. So essentially, what is the process of fertilization? Why is everything quiet? That's because I'm not talking at the moment. I'm just giving you time to maybe put some answers and maybe think. Give you about another 30 seconds. Okay. Don't worry if you don't understand. Again, this is a challenge. Just trying to link all the things together. So I guess we can go back over this. Um, so let's go through C. So C, the first one, any of these would have been accepted. So you could have said so that they are not crowded 
or accept more space well, personally, one of my favorites was to avoid competition. So this is why it's beneficial for them to be scattered apart. So they can get enough nutrients or minerals. So they can all get enough water so that seedlings are not shaded by the plant. Um, so they can get enough light or so that they can grow in new areas. Now, I did see a lot of people talking about things, but I always like to extend your answer because why keep your answer to the basics? If you can make it a little bit of a higher level answer, why not? Again, so... Let's just recap this. If you have two plants growing next to each other, they will be competing for resources. Okay, God, well, this is probably because you joined a little bit late. We've just been talking about seeds. Now, if you have two seeds that are starting to grow next to each other, they will be for, uh, competing for resources. Okay, so what is beneficial is for them to be maybe spread a bit further apart. And that's so they can ensure all the correct nutrients, enough water, enough light. And that will make sure that they can grow efficiently. Now, the challenge. This was just a very fancy way of asking um, what are the stages of pollination that we went over? Now, we went over four stages earlier. Now, the first one is pollination. So the pollen tube will grow down the style and into the ovule. Now, the pollen nuclei will fuse with or fertilize the egg cell nucleus. Now, the egg cell nucleus, we don't we're not really using this word egg cell because we're talking about plants here. We say ovule instead. Now that will form the seed or another really fancy term for uh, seed is an endosperm nuclei. Okay, that will be the end. Um, what I have noticed is that maybe we've struggled a little bit on fertilization. So Mr. Williams, I believe if you're listening, if you'd like to stop the recording here, I'm, I'm sure people can always go back to it. I'm just gonna go back over fertilization. Um, then after that, we can just do a few more questions. Um, could just be anything to do with science. And uh, yeah, so let's just go back to fertilization real quick. Uh, Miriam, we're not just going to do question time just yet. We're just going to go back to here because I think this is an area where some people struggled with. So just going over the idea of fertilization. Let's start off with the basics of plants. So they do have male and female reproductive systems. They do have both. OK, so we have the male female, uh, male female. Repro no, we have the male reproductive system. That's fine, Aiden. Uh, if you are missing anything, remember, just go on the YouTube channel SRS Science and you'll find this video up there. OK, so the anther and the filament. OK, now they will produce pollen. That's the purpose of the male reproductive system to produce pollen. Now, if we go to the female reproductive system, we have the ovary and the ovule. Now, the ovary will contain the ovule. Again, uh, guys, if you do need to go, that is perfectly fine. OK, now when it comes to reproductive, um, the plant reproduction and in terms of fertilization, this occurs in certain steps. Ariana, this is the lesson ended for now. I'm just going over things which I think people may have needed a bit more clarity on or may have struggled with from questions that I was seeing about. OK, if you are going, have a wonderful day. So plant fertilization. Step one, pollination needs to occur so the pollen will land on the stigma. Now that can happen by the different types of seed dispersal that we spoke about, wind, insect, water, explosion, or even self-pollination. No worries, Ariana, have a lovely day. Now, step two, the pollen will begin to grow a pollen tube down the style, which is what we can see here. Now, once the pollen tube reaches the ovary, so it will then follow it down, it will reach the ovary. It, the pollen, which will still be here, will release the nucleus down the tube. Now, once that has been released, this will reach the nucleus of the ovule and they will fuse in a process called fertilization. Once so the lesson is finished, we can go. Yes, the lesson has finished. You can go. This is just recapping. Once the nucleus of the uh, pollen and the ovule form, the ovary will begin to develop into the fruit and the ovary will begin to develop into the seeds. Okay, Morgan, have a lovely day. Goodbye. Are there any questions regarding fertilization again? Bye, guys. Cool, wonderful. Okay, we'll leave that there. Um, have a lovely day if you are leaving. If you do want to stick around and ask a few more sciencey questions, my specialism is in biology, so if you'd like to know more about the human body, um, 
then we will do that. OK, um, I believe Mr Williams is in here. So if any more physics questions, maybe he'd be better off to answer the oh. questions that give you a much more understanding answer. I am. Um, yeah, why don't you step more of my specialism? So Absolutely. any questions? Have a lovely day if you are leaving. You know those plants that eat flies? Is that herbivore or carnivore? That is a carnivore. And why do they eat flies? That's because they will have better nutritional value from the flies needed for their requirements compared to others. So maybe the fly provides them with the nutrition that maybe other things can't. Can I can I jump in? Sure. Um, so what uh, Sarah is absolutely right. They do need uh, they do need extra extra nutrition, uh, which they can't get from the soil. So they often grow in soils that don't have many nitrate ions in them. And plants need nitrate ions to make proteins. So if they can't get the nitrate ions from the soil, then they will get the uh, then they'll get them from basically the proteins inside an animal like a fly. So they eat flies. Uh, they've evolved to do so because they've grown in very acidic soil, which doesn't have very many nitrate ions, so they can't make their own proteins, which is pretty cool. Wow, I did not know that in that much detail. Very interesting. <laughs> Um, any other questions, guys? No worries, Phil. Have a good day. No worries, Miriam. Uh, Miriam, we are not in school. Bye-bye, Alex. Have a good day. Can I add the slides of this presentation to the files in science teams? Um, what I'll say is, Eliza, it's probably a lot easier if you just go onto the SRS Science YouTube channel. You can just watch it from there and pause on any slides that you need to take notes from. I should have it up on the YouTube channel by the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, so you can then watch it, um, watch it through uh, on there. And you can pause it on any slide you want to have a look at and all the rest of it. All right, guys, have a lovely day. Stay safe. I had a question oh. earlier, but you forgot. <laughs> you have to try your hardest to remember it. you got a couple of minutes, I think, Miriam. If we don't get any other questions, I think we'll probably just end the call. But if you do remember it, please do post it. This is... Definitely my favourite bit of the lesson is when we get to answer the questions that you guys have got. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Are you still recording now, sir? Or is it? Oh, we are still recording. Maybe I'll uh, I'll stop the recording now. That's cool.